What's going on, Bills Mafia? Built in Buffalo fam, welcome back. It's been a minute. It's been a while since we've been, since I've been on air, since in front of your guys' eyes. Same with Scott, who's going to be joining me today. It's been a little bit, um, but we're back here. Another Off the Edge show. Only a few more left until we have a little bit of a change, which we're not going to get into right now. But um, it's going to be a good one. So it's going to be a great show. We've got a lot to dive into. We're going to be talking a lot of the offensive side of the ball. So Off the Edge starts right now. <laughs> What is going on, Bills Mafia, Built in Buffalo fam? Welcome back. Got another off the edge for you guys today. Like I said, the intro, it's been a minute since we've seen you guys, since you've seen my face, Scott's face. Um, but we're glad to be back on here. We're going to be doing off the edge for a few more weeks, and then we do have a little announcement that we'll have, we'll get to in a few weeks. Um, but it's going to be a good one today. we got a really good, awesome one. It's going to be a lot of offensive side of the ball talk, which I know everybody's been talking about now. It's getting close to the draft time. We're a little bit over about two weeks, uh, about under two weeks, actually, at this point um, until the draft. So it's going to be a good one. Um, but yeah, got a lot to go talk about. Scott, how are you doing on this Friday evening? End of the work week, long long week, short week. How's it been this week? And then how are you, how are you doing on this uh, fine evening? Yeah, doing pretty well. Thanks. Uh, excited to talk some bills. We're getting to that kind of like weird point in the off season when there's no football, but like free agencies kind of winding down, getting close to the draft, which is personally one of my favorite parts of the off season. And then you can kind of after the draft really start to see like what this roster might look like next season. So kind of getting into the, you know, done with last year roster for next year tar- starting to take shape we can really see you know what team we're going to be working with come september so excited to talk some bills and you know excited for everything that's ahead yeah it's going to be a different bills team than we're used to seeing um on, in many different areas on, on both sides of the ball offense and defense uh offense a little bit more shocking i think to everybody that we're seeing as many changes as we are seeing um so that's just going to bring me to the initial initial question which you know i know everybody's been talking about it for a while now it's already kind of older news but we haven't been able to kind of give our thoughts on it and it is the stefan diggs trade stefan diggs going out of buffalo it kind of was something that you know i think a lot of fans were in denial about and about happening about just being a thing we kept pushing it no he wants to be here i mean he kept saying that as well you know i want to retire bill so it's been kind of one of those things that when it did happen there was a lot of shock on on, on the side of bill's bill's mafia because also the money then plays a factor um so you know obviously like i said it's been talked about a lot what are your just initial thoughts on the digs digs trade until we before we get into kind of more of the offense in depth what are your thoughts on it so it was shocking when it happened i was in a i was in a work meeting uh when the trade went through and like my apple watch was like buzzing so much i had to like finally look i was like did somebody die like what why is like why am i getting blown up so much and i saw that Diggs got traded and i was like oh wow like because like you said like he said like i i want to be here i want to retire a bill in between all of his cryptic social media posts and everything else like he never said anything other anything publicly other than i, I want to be here josh allen's my guy blah 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 but I was, yeah, shocking when it happened, but once I've had time to digest it and kind of think about what the offense can be, like, oddly okay with it, especially which, like, we'll get into later with the, the Joe Brady difference than the Ken Dorsey, than the Brian Dable. Um, I, I think that we're going to be able to distribute the ball a little bit better, so I don't think we're going to miss him as much as everybody thinks. Uh, I, I think we're going to be okay. Yeah, I, I, I'm I, kind of similar with my thoughts. Like, yes, you know, the Bills will miss Stefan Diggs in in some degree. Um, but I think it was one of those things where after you kind of digest it and you look at the trade and you look at both sides, it, it, it kind of was time, right? It was something that has ran its course when it comes to just whether it's putting Diggs on the field and force feeding him the ball or not force feeding him the ball going other directions with the other weapons they have there and just using him as a decoy in, in any way, shape, or form. It kind of just seemed like, okay, how much more can Diggs really do here and be content with it? And how much can the Bills offense be content with with just whatever it is, whether it's force feeding Diggs or whatever it is in their offensive style? Um, so, I mean, it, it sucks. It sucks to see. I think everybody 
really wishes oops, my mic was a little bit far away from me i didn't realize that um I, I think everybody kind of wishes it ended differently i mean i know for a fact i do as well i think everybody wishes he spent the rest of his career here everybody thought he was kind of going to do that even if it wasn't the rest of his career at least the next two or three seasons um so i think it's more the way it went down and the way that it ended for kind of the reason of why people were so upset and people were more bothered by it which I mean, if you knew, if you follow me on Twitter, you saw it as well with me. I was not very happy with how everything was handled when it came to the Bill side of things, when it came to Dig side of things, when it came to the last year and a half, two years, kind of where they kind of ramped up in this situation with Digs. Um, but I think honestly, the biggest part of it is is the fact that for years, Bills fans like me, like you, like anybody else has been defending Diggs, has been saying, no, he's not the same guy as he was in Minnesota. And I think that's the part that hurts the most is kind of thinking, well, Vikings fans were telling us for years that they were going to do the same thing to us. He's going to do the same thing to us. And, um, you know, that's, I think, the part that bothers people the most is the fact that that they were kind of right. Um, we do have a question here, though, uh, the, in the comments I want to bring up. Do you know if Josh knew about this trade? Does he have some say on the decision? decision? Um, for me personally, I think they would definitely have him involved in the decision. I mean, this is his number one guy, right? This has been for the last four years, his, his best friend on the field, right? It's been the guy that when he, when he needs to play, he's going to look to digs. So I definitely think he had some to say in it. I definitely think he had to give the okay on it. Um, just because like I said, it's, it's been a guy that, you know, they, they were best friends for the, the first little bit here and, uh, you know, maybe went a little sour as, as time went on, but he had to have been, I think uh, you, you rarely see QBs not in, um, these this type of decisions. And when you, they aren't in these type of decisions in involved in these type of decisions, you see situations like Aaron Rodgers situation or any other situation where QBs come out and they say it. So I think Josh was definitely in on it. What do you think? Do you think Josh was in on the decision? Yeah, and in Bean's press conference the day of the trade, he said that he talked to Josh before the move. So I would imagine that they let him know what was happening. I don't know if he like had final veto or anything like that. But yeah, I'm sure Josh was, was in on it and probably okay with it based on some stuff that's been coming out. Like who knows how true it is or how true it isn't. But it kind of seemed like the last year was kind of rocky in that relationship, which – I think we could all tell from the outside, but maybe we were trying to, you know, convince ourselves that it wasn't. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that Josh had to have known about it and whether he had some say in it, I don't know. But, yeah, he definitely knew it was happening. He didn't find out uh, by an Adam Schefter tweet like the rest of us, at least. Yeah, I think he probably would have tweeted something out if that is the way he found out. Even like, what? Right. Wait, what? Um but yeah, I mean, it, it sucks, right? It sucks at the end of the day. It sucks to see any player leave. I mean, it, it, it hurts because, again, he was a phenomenal player. He still is a phenomenal player. He'll do amazing things over there in Houston. Um, and I know that, like I said, I was a little bit negative towards Diggs a lot throughout the whole week. Um, and, 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 you know, it's just one of those things where at first, yeah, you're going to be a little bit ups upset about it. But at the end of the day, you know, he gave us a lot of moments. He gave us a lot of great times and uh he'll forever be etched in buffalo bills history as one of the best receivers in this organization's history if not the best um but yeah so i don't want to get too too much on digs i know like i said everybody's been talking about it for a while it's kind of done over with i do think as a even as a whole as a as a fan base we do need to we do need to move just a little bit away from it right um, not completely because he's, like I said, he's still great in the history and he's still part of this team's history, but time to move away from it, move on. Now we got new weapons coming in. That's the exciting part. As sad as it is to see a, a weapon go away, now you have, you're going to, you know, you're going to have a weapon coming in because the Bills need one. Um, so that's what, that's what we'll kind of move into now. Let's get into the offense a little bit. I do just want to ask you though, what's your number one thing with Diggs gone, Davis gone, uh, Ken Dorsey now kind of implementing more of his playbook rather than just kind of a variant of, of Ken Dorsey and his combined. What are you most excited for watching with this offense up, upcoming season? Yeah, so I'm excited to see more of what they did the end of last year with Knox healthy, Kincaid, you know, hopefully taking that next step his second year in the league, like more two tight end sets, more James Cook more getting our playmakers the ball in space rather than sometimes forcing the ball downfield to guys who aren't here anymore, like more possession type receivers. And hopefully that leads to some more taking care of the ball. Um, could mean a few less shots, but with Josh Allen, you'll have to take some stays NFL. You have to, you know, stretch the field, but like the two tight ends, like coming straight at you, playing downhill, 
like getting Curtis Samuel the ball in space, using Kincaid and Knox over the middle of the field. James Cook uh, had a, a breakout second year last year, and I, I think he's going to take another step forward this year in a, a more um, – and a, a bit of a bigger role and whoever they draft, you'd imagine that a receiver is coming early on, you know, in the draft in two weeks. So just excited to see more of what works so well last year. Like the, if you watch the bills in the first half of the season, the second half of the season, the offense looked almost completely different thinking about like that Cowboys game specifically. And like, look how well that, that worked. So more um, Joe Brady and kind of when he has a whole off season to get his, his scheme in. So it's kind of more of what worked in the second half and they should have the personnel to do that. Yeah. I'm excited to see kind of similar things of just, I'm excited to see how he uses everybody. I think that there's with the, 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 type of talent that they have there with Shakir you like you said Knox and Kincaid with the James Cook you really can move them all around kind of right you saw it even yeah. last year towards the end of the year with Dorsey you saw Diggs sometimes line up in the backfield right you saw guys moving around the football field and I think I think you'll see that again this year with just like you said with the amount of weapons they have with two tight end sets you can do two, two tight end sets you can put out Kincaid out, out out in the slot too you can put him offline you can put Shakir in, in the slot you can put him offline as well you can move Cook out, out, out on the outside too like you can put everybody everywhere and I think that's kind of where they're going to draft too I don't think it's going to be yeah. well we're just getting a guy that's a one trick pony it's going to be a guy that can line up at the exit can line up in the slot can line up a little bit everywhere in the backfield a little bit so I'm excited to see how this draft goes, and I'm excited to see which direction they go because of this. I think the playbook will open up a little bit more. I think that was one thing with Dorsey we didn't see. I think we saw it kind of stay in that 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 one type of offense of, you know, it's going to revolve around Josh no matter what. It's going to be Josh's offense no matter what, which I think with a Joe Brady offense, you'll see it's, like you said, become a little bit more of a James Cook offense as well. Start to the, you know, not just rely on Josh time after time. So I'm excited to see Joe Brady's offense. And you kind of alluded to it a little bit, the difference between Brady and Dorsey. And that does bring to my bring me to my next question, which is what do you think the major difference in a Joe Brady offense compared to a Ken Dorsey offense? What do you think that Brady brings to the table that that maybe Ken Dorsey didn't? I think Brady's really good at getting the ball in everyone's hands, whereas in Dorsey's offense, it was very Diggs-centric. Um, obviously, Diggs is gone, so it's going to have to be – it can't be him-centric anymore. He doesn't exist. But uh, Joe Brady's really good at getting his playmakers the ball in space. So, like, he loves those swing screens, quick passes, like getting James Cook out as a receiver. Um, plays like that and, like, getting the ball in everybody's hands, spreading it around, like – this Bills team next season, as it's currently constructed, and even they bring someone in the draft, probably doesn't have a true like number one or alpha receiver, whatever you want to call it. But I think that's okay. I think you're going to see multiple guys have five, six, seven hundred, eight yards next season, um, just because of how well they're going to use everybody. They're going to have to. But I, I think Joe Brady is really good at getting creative with how he gets everybody involved. So uh, I'm excited to see that evolve next season, especially with Kincaid, because like if you look at kind of like the Chiefs and you know, a lot of teams these days, like that tight end across the middle of the field is their top target. They drafted Kincaid in the first round to be that. So seeing what he can do, seeing what Curtis Samuel can do, obviously you have Shakir coming back and then James Cook. So just like how creative he can be getting everybody the ball. And like you said, lining up in different spots. So I'm excited. They're going to have different ways they can attack teams this year rather than just the same, you know, line up three out wide, a running back, a tight end who's kind of more in the slot. And then like, the Josh do something play like they're going to have a lot, a lot more options this year. I hope anyway. Yeah. And I like, you know, the word that, that you used that, that really stood out and, and that I was going to use in a second was the word creative, right? That was the major thing. I think you're going to see with a Joe Brady offense where there were times where it felt like even at the game, I sometimes when I was there and I'd hear three, four rows up people screaming for more creativity, for more, just more variety from Ken Dorsey offense. Right. And I think you'll see that with, 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 uh, Joe Brady, but with Dorsey, it just felt like they never really went over the middle of the field, like you said when, or earlier. With you're excited to see more over the field with Kincaid and Knox. I don't think he, you saw that really much with Dorsey, and I same with the James Cook usage. You didn't really see it consistent. With James Cook wasn't working, they're going away from it. Ken Dorsey, I think, needs will stay with it and stick with it even when it's not working. And you kind of saw it a little bit with Brady at the end of last year as well. But I just I think the creativity is going to be the number one thing. I think you're going to start to see just 
more better play designs. It's not going to just be mesh concept. It's not just going to be let's send everybody out to the outside every time and send Gabe Davis on three routes the entire game. Like obviously Gabe Davis isn't here anymore, but we're not going to see a receiver running five routes the entire season. It's going to be everybody's running every route. Everybody's going to have to expand their route tree. So I think with that's going to be the number one, the number one, change i think in this offense is you're going to see a lot more creativity i think you're going to see especially even like we saw towards the end of last year as well a lot more of that sixth offensive lineman coming out and yeah. i think that will even be more creative as well it's not just gonna be oh well here comes the sixth lineman we're running the ball i think it's now it's going to be well we don't know what they're going to do they could do a million things here because they have the personnel to do it right Kincaid, even though he's a tight end he's not a hundred percent just a tight end right he can line up and line up as a tight end on the line, but he has that that receiver-esque route running that can be mismatching. And, you know, it, it can be something that that they use to their advantage. When they have a linebacker on Kincaid, use it, right? Use that to your advantage. And I think you'll see that with Joe Brady using his using his matchups to his advantage, right? And that was one thing I don't think we saw too, too much when it came to Dorsey. It wasn't using your matchups the best way you possibly can. So I'm excited to see how Joe Brady off, Brady's offense operates. Um, I think, you know, the one thing that we keep alluding to as well, and I, we might agree with, is just letting James cook. That's that simple, right? Letting letting him cook, letting him get involved. So before we get on to the next question I had here, I actually did want to ask you about that. Do you think James Cook now becomes that number one weapon in this offense even when they do draft a receiver or whoever, or Curtis Samuel's coming in, do you think James Cook is going to be that guy that this that this offense is centered around outside of Josh? Based on the moves they've made, it really seems that way. You know, like getting rid of Diggs, don't have that like alpha receiver like we've mentioned a few times now. Yeah, I think it's going to be him and Kincaid and then Samuel and Shakira on the outside and then whoever they draft, Knox and in his role as that like second tight end getting his targets. Cause he'll probably, you know, get some openings his coverage will be rolled elsewhere. But yeah, it seems like they want to be kind of more of like a, a power football team. Um, obviously Josh Allen is, you know, one of the best quarterbacks in the league and debate and rank him where, wherever you want, but he is. So he'll kind of be the, the centerpiece and I'm sure we're going to throw the ball a lot, but yeah, like based on the moves they've made, I, I think James cook is in line to be that, that kind of centerpiece behind Josh Allen. So um, based on the step he made last year, I definitely think he has the ability to take another step, uh, has some things he needs to work on like everybody else. But yeah, I I'm excited to see the year he has this year. I think, uh, I think he's going to have a big one. And I do want to point out, you talked a little bit earlier about how you, you expect kind of a couple different receivers to be get up there and that, you know, 700, 800 kind of, you know, two or three of them. And that's what you did see with Joe Brady in Carolina. And that it was actually one of those years where, where Christian McCaffrey was hurt for a lot of that yeah. year, right? He only played, I believe, three or four games that entire year. And it was early in the year. And they had almost three 1,000-yard receivers. I don't yeah, and it wasn't like – I think it was it was um, Samuel, DJ Moore, and then like Chosen Anderson was the third one, I think, right? Yeah. yeah. It's like an interesting group. Yeah. So again, I think you'll see see the ball spread around a little bit. And I think maybe even that played a factor into the Diggs trade. Who knows? Maybe they said, Hey Diggs, we know you're upset. We're gonna move you. Also, part of the reason is we're gonna go different offense where it's not gonna be centric around one guy. We yep. know that you like to get your targets. You might not get that this year. So maybe that played a factor. Who knows? But I, I'm very excited to see how this offense works. I'm very excited to see James Cook in this offense. If you are a fantasy football person, that's going to be something as that time gets around. Once it gets to draft time, it's going to be where does James Cook fall in that draft? Because I think yep. he could have potentially be a very high fantasy football player. Um, but again, that's a conversation for a different time. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to see how, how Joe Brady attacks this and kind of just uses it. I do want to bring up a couple of comments, though, before we get on to the next question. Um, Rory came in and said, do you need that downfield threat to keep the safeties honest? That is very true. I will say, though, and, you know, Scott, you can you can chime in on this after. Is I think the NFL also you're starting to see defenses play that we're not play that type of defense where they're not going to give up the deep ball as much. They're going to make it so their safeties are going to play a little bit deeper. They're not going to allow anything over the top. You saw that this year in a pretty big decline in offense, offensive big plays around the league, not just the Bills. So what do you think about that? Do you think that is a style the NFL is starting to go towards of no more deep balls? 
Yeah, definitely. Like teams are playing Mahomes, they're playing Josh, they're playing Herbert and kind of that cover two shell. And the Bills are one of kind of the first teams to do it against the Chiefs um, and just playing two two safeties over the top and then making you take those intermediate routes and hoping that eventually, you know, he gets bored or he gets greedy or he tries to force something and makes a throw he shouldn't. And then you, know, you have your guys back there. Yeah, that, that seems to be kind of like the the um, – the the game plan against teams with with good quarterbacks is yeah like make them dink and dunk their way down the field and hopefully eventually they'll make a mistake so yeah de- definitely agree with that and we've definitely seen Josh Allen get a little bit impatient in those in those a little uh, bit instances. yeah <laughs> but hey that's part of the reason that that Bills Mafia loves him I do also want to bring up this comment up though shout out to you Michael first time viewer glad you're here and we appreciate the comment or the 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 compliment as well but uh, glad you're here for the first time as well. Um, and then I do also want to say I'm glad that I'm seeing a lot of people very uh, oh 50 years as well of a fan so shout out Michael really really uh, I, I I know you've had your heart broken too many times that's for sure um, but um, yeah it's it's cool to see you guys in the comments as well I do like to just point that out you guys are awesome in the comments already um, but yeah and then I do also last comment I want to pull up is from spin zero four eight one I do love this comment here with Dorsey there's a lot of option routes cause a lot of miscommunications between court with between Josh and the receivers. And I do think that that would that did play a factor. You saw it play a factor in many games, especially with a guy like Gabe Davis, where it was just miscommunication with Josh. He was going one way, he took the option out going corner, Josh going going just down the field, whatever it is, they're missing each other. Do you think that also do you think you'll see less option routes from a Joe Brady offense? Or do you think maybe even more from a Joe Brady offense? You you need those, especially when the defense is disguising what they're in well and like might look like one thing at the line they flip to something else like the, the you need to have that option you need to have that chemistry to, to make those plays work yeah i can think of a two a couple of pretty painful gabe davis ones that got missed this season but um i i, I, I don't think we'll see less I, I just hope that the guys may have a little bit better chemistry and maybe like get in the film or make sure they're seeing the same thing it did seem like that like Josh and the receivers this past season weren't always seeing things the same way. So who knows? Maybe that could could have had something to do with the fact they switched offensive coordinators, they switched schemes, they switched what they thought they wanted to do. Um, sort of full off season together. Hopefully um, it doesn't happen. But there'll also be a lot of new faces in that receiver room this year. So could be uh, we could have a few more of those before it gets better. Yeah. Um, and I also lied. I'm going to bring up two more comments because the spin, I thought this one was also hilarious about just if, if Cook just drops, stops dropping and give me touchdowns, yeah, he would be a better, better fantasy player. Hopefully he doesn't yeah. drop him this year. And then another good one here from Bill's fan, 7883. Uh, he could, couldn't break a tackle. Cook couldn't break a tackle from the, from the wind. He gets 95% of his yards from the O-line and he drops and fumbles a lot. I like him, but he has his, his warts. RB is a bigger need than we think. Now, I do agree that it is a bigger need than, than most people are saying. Um, and yes, cook, cook has areas. He can definitely get better at fumbling drops. Um, you know, he didn't really have huge fumbling problems. I believe he didn't even have a single fumble in college, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and then of course his first, first carry in the NFL was a fumble. So I do think those, especially for a rookie running back can happen and a young running back can happen. So I do think it will get better over time with cook, with his drops and his fumbles. That's just to me, concentration type of things. Um, maybe not so much fumbles, but definitely drops. Um, but I do think it's, it's definitely a bigger need than we think. I think they need a goal line back. So what do you think about this comment here from, from Bill's fan seven, eight, eight, three. Yeah, James Cook isn't the run through you style running back. He's quick. He's shifty. He, I, th- I think he breaks more tackles than you think. I don't have any stats to back this up, but he runs harder than you think. Um, and you know, like a lot of the good running backs, they can um, attribute a lot of their carries to an O line. Like most good O linemen have good running backs, and good running backs have good O linemen because the two go hand in hand together. It's like you look at all the best coaches in NFL history, and they've had the best quarterbacks in NFL history. Like that's not a coincidence. Um, so yeah, definitely need another running back. There's only two on the roster right now, him and Ty Johnson, and they don't have that kind of bruiser style. So could see them picking that up in the draft. Maybe not have talked about Estime from Notre Dame before Zeke Elliott's still out there, but I don't know if they have any interest in him, but yeah, th- there will definitely be another back or two added, um, between now and when the season starts. So yeah, then, definitely that posi- position room is not by any means full yet. I will say um, 
the one thing that that does show though with Cook is he's he's got he's got the vision. He he can yes. he can pick his holes. He knows where to, he where he's going, um, and he's he's patient. He's very he's a patient runner at times. When he he when the holes doesn't open up, he's gonna wait for it to open up. So, I, you know those things. Yes, he's he's got things he definitely has to work on. Um, you know as as does every young running back. But um, you know I, I and think one of his solid. oh sorry. Yeah. Fumbles in the in the Broncos game is more of a crossover dribble, so I don't know if you count that one. Well, yeah. Well, every time I think of crossover dribble in the NFL, I just think of Shady with the ball out here half the time and <laughs> making me nervous. Well, but you know, I, I think yeah, I think Cook will be he'll, he'll he'll bounce back, especially from his fumbles. And I, I'm seeing in the comments three fumbles, two lost, so not too too bad. Obviously, you want that to get that to one if possible. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see. Um, before we get on to what epi- what weapons we're eyeing on the offensive side of the ball, I do want to ask, though, you know, like we said, there's been a lot of changes on the offensive side of the ball that we didn't really even expect. What moves or move don't you like that they did um, or just you wish they would have done a little bit more of on the offensive side? So it, it's kind of tough because I've convinced myself to be okay with all of them. Maybe that's just like wishful thinking, but I was interested that they cut Mitch Morse to break up the O-line that played so well together last year. I understand it, salary cap, you know, and whatnot. And I'm sure when they made all those moves back in March, they knew that a digs thing was probably coming. They were going to have to eat a big chunk of money. So I'm sure that played into it, but like the O-line played so well together, had great camaraderie. None of them missed a start, barely any of them even missed a snap that I really remember. So I, I thought they were going to run it back with that O-line again. And I know they're going to switch um, you know, McDermott in, or not McDermott, uh, Williams, Connor, yeah, Connor McDermott. They're going to switch him in. And then they have David Edwards who can play guard. Leo Collins can also play guard. So um, I, I think it'll be fine. But I was just kind of surprised. I thought they would run it back with that group together again and, you know, try to have the same success running the ball that they had. So that one was a little interesting to me. Yeah, that was the number one I had here too as well. You know, he was still playing well. He was a leader on that on that side of the football. He's been here for a little bit now. Um, you know, it definitely was shocking. And it was something that even when we did the the mock offseason, we definitely we, we thought about it. We did, I think. We might have even done it. I don't believe we did, but we might have. But we definitely talked about it, right? We were like, well, you can save some money here. It's just, yeah, the me for me, it was like you finally got your five starting five offensive linemen set, right? You knew it. You had it down at the end of the year. They played almost every snap together. I just think it was a little bit of a shock to see it, especially that the center position, right? It's the it's the middle of the offensive line. It's the quarterback, essentially, of the offensive line. So I definitely, excuse me, was a little bit shocked there. And then, honestly, the only other thing that bothered me, which is alluding back to um, uh, who's comment, Bills fan 7883, I, I was a little bit frustrated that they didn't, maybe take a little, a little bit of a bigger look at running back, but I also knew that running back is something that you can wait on. You can look in the draft, whatever it is. Um, I am glad that they did bring back uh, Ty Johnson. I'm very happy about that, but I do think that they still need to address that and they need to, as I think everybody I see saying in the comments as well, they need to get that, that, that really gritty, power just going to run you over type of back um which we'll get to in a second I, we do have a couple that we're going to talk about but um yeah i i wish they would have maybe you know i i liked an aj dylan i wish they would have maybe looked into him a little bit more um i can't remember what he specifically got from green bay but um he would have been a guy that i would have been interested in and then yeah ezekiel elliott is the one guy that that still i'm interested in now i don't think it will necessarily happen but i definitely would love to see him in buffalo bills uniform i think he showed last year he still has some some juice left which before last year i was done with him right i if you look back at me before last year i was completely wrong on that i thought he was done it was his legs were gone everything was gone and he you know he showed last year he he still got a little bit left um, yeah. So I think, he, and he's a smart runner too. That's the other thing. He's a smart runner. He's been in the league for a while. We know that um, as, as, you know, he's been versatile here. too. He can catch the ball out of the backfield. He can play center, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, I, yeah. So Zeke's a guy that I would look at, um, but now that actually does bring us into what we're eyeing the most. Now we'll start with just free agents in general. Now I have a couple guys listed here running back wise. We can, we can just, you know, get into running backs, I guess. Actually, we'll just you know, start with running backs, whether it's draft or free agency, either one. 
Um, I know me and you are big Audric Estime guys, Estime, whichever. I still don't to this day know how to fully pronounce it. Um, yeah. But I'm a big, big fan of him. You know, he's got the power. He keeps his legs moving on contact. Um, you know, he did at times in his college career have times with troubling, but he's got great yards after contact and he did kind of clean it up. He puts a big emphasis on trying to hold on to the ball because of that, that, that instance in college where he was, he had that stretch. I believe it was two, three weeks where he had a, had a real rough stretch holding on to the football. Um, but yeah, he's a guy that I like. I know um, Braylon Allen's another guy that, that everybody's been talking about. He's grown on me as I've heard more and more people talk about him as I've watched him a little bit more. You know, though, I am very concerned about his fumbling. Uh, he had one yeah. of the highest fumble rates out of anybody in this class. But he for sure is a power guy, right? He can put his shoulder down. He's not too much of a one cut guy or yeah, he's not too much of a guy that's going to, you know, necessarily make a guy miss or anything. Um, but he does have pretty good breakaway speed, He, he you know, for an NFL, for a power guy, at least. So he's a guy. And then I do have a sleeper here. I do have another guy, which I'll see if you name, but I do have a sleeper here that I think late round I would like from a small school, South Dakota State Jackrabbits, Isaiah Davis. I like him. He's explosive. He misses forced. He misses tackle. Make, he forces missed tackles, excuse me. Um, but again, with him, it's the fact that he didn't play against the best competition for him. So I would like him late if you can get him in like that six seventh round um five maybe a little bit late five but i i like him as well so I, as a sleeper isaiah davis is a guy to for me to look at um what about for you i know for for, for free agency as well there's still the only other guy in free agency wise that i had there was rashad penny didn't really get too much of a chance in philly last year because deandre swift had a phenomenal year um but he's another guy that i wouldn't mind bringing in just as a flyer see if he can make the roster see if he can make a push there um so what about for you for running backs who who really catches your eye yeah so ray davis from kentucky i think is interesting to me he's a uh, kind of a power back we've been missing i think he's around 215 220 played in the sec which is you know about as good as it gets in, in college football and if he's there in the fifth sixth round which some mocks are saying he might be like, I could see them taking a, a flyer on him, you know, kind of have that power back. If you don't have estimate, like we mentioned earlier, like I, I like him a lot. And I think his 40 was like a four seven two. but if you watch him play, like he plays a lot faster than that. Like I think it, it, they had one game, might've been the Duke game where he just like broke through the line of scrimmage and was gone to ice the game. Like no one caught him. So there's, you know, you're, you're, in cleats and in your underwear speed and then there's your game speed he's one of those guys that i think plays a lot faster uh than his 40 time uh shows then another guy he could even be available in the seventh or the sixth or maybe even as an undrafted free agent but frank gore jr um it, a name that a lot of bills fans will know came in a, from a smaller school too not quite as small as south dakota state but southern miss uh had a, a real nice career there and he's not the biggest back but he runs hard and i think it's someone that because the Bills at the running back position, they're not taking it in day one, probably not even in day two. So those value picks um, could be could be guys to look at late, you know, to try to take a flyer on. Yeah, and I'm glad you mentioned Ray Davis because he is another guy. He's from Kentucky, for those who don't know. By the way, if we, we want to know, Estime, he, uh, Aldrich Estime is from Notre Dame. Braylon Allen, I did see they have uh, Joey there. That That is the one from Wisconsin that, we, that you were talking about there. Um, Isaiah Davis, we said, South Dakota State. Um, and then who's the last one he's had there again? I'm blanking right now that you just said. Um, uh, I said, uh, Frank Gore Jr. Frank Gore Jr. Uh, yep, yeah, yeah. So, Frank Gore Jr., yeah, and that's you know, another guy that, like you said, I mean, we definitely know his family can, can do it. Um, maybe we'll see if he can. Um, but yeah, I think those those are actually exactly the guys that I had on my, my list. So, we, we kind of were both there similar looking at the similar type of guys but yeah ray davis is an interesting one to me if he falls i definitely would love to see the bills go get him he's i think he's got got the vision he's a guy that even though he has power he can also still he can be a one cut type of guy right he can yep. be that guy that boom one cut gone um and I, i'm glad that you alluded also to the the difference between game speed and 40 speed right or off the field speed or just whatever it is um because that is something that i think people don't look at is when you look at the game like you see it even with quarterbacks, right? You see it all the time with with quarterbacks. Is these guys, yeah, they may have ran a fat or fast forty time, but when they're playing, they're not playing that fast. Or especially corners are a big thing. Well, how fast do they play compared to how fast did they run? Um, yes, forty times still matter and everything, but um, there is a difference, though. I, I'm glad that you, you brought that up. Is the the difference between that game speed and and that 
off the field speed, 40 speed, whatever you want to call it. Um, but yeah, so running back, I think is going to be a, a big conversation in, in the draft, especially on that day three. Um, who knows? I think the bills could end up saying, well, we only have two on the roster. We have picks that we can maybe get rid of late for next year, late this year to move up, whatever it is and move up to get that guy. For me, it though, if you're going to draft, it's between any of those, those four guys, Frank Gore Jr. would probably be my fifth, sixth late round option. Yeah. Um, but yeah, those four guys of Ray Davis, Audra Gastame, Braylon Allen, and Isaiah Davis are my my four that I would love. I wouldn't want them to go up and get a guy like, you know, obviously it doesn't fit what the Bills need, but even like I'm just using as an example, Blake Corum, right? I wouldn't want them to go right. get a guy like that because it's just too early, right? Um so yeah, I think running backs can be an interesting one. Do you have any last thoughts on running backs before we kind of get into the the receivers? Not really. Um, need, need to sign one, whether it's in the draft or a free agent, or maybe even both, you know, get some competition in there. So uh, Bean has some work to do before, you know, camp to bring in some more guys there because definitely an incomplete position group under the draft. Yeah, yeah, and I do like this comment here from Miguel with his bills in need of uh, Isaiah Pacheco type of back. Yes, they, the guy that's going to just – I do, every time I think of Isaac Pacheco, I just can't picture. I picture him running, and just the, his running style is just every yeah. time he is just the funniest thing to me. Um, Seventh round guy too, so you know, late round running backs have a, a history of, of turning out okay. Yeah, that is yeah, that is true. So I yeah, and running backs, I, I'm not even a huge fan necessarily of running backs for early in general, anyways, just because like you said, you can get them late. You've seen it time after yeah. time after time. Um, and Ray, I'm gonna or Roy. Sorry, I keep I. Just, may have called you Ray earlier. Um, Roy, uh, I'm going to hold you to this, Roy, by the way. Yeah, um, prove it. If they draft running back at 60, I'm, I'm going to DM you, and we're going to ha- get this to happen. But it probably won't happen because Brandon Bean does take a, take a running back at 60. I will also be very, very upset. Um, but time to move on to receivers because everybody – that's the big talk of the town, right? Who's going to be the new guy? Who's going to be the new wide receiver one? Uh, some people already have it, think it's it's already here in Khalil Shakir. He's going to be that future. He's going to be that future number one. Uh, some people think that, like you said, we don't might not need a number one. We might just need a bunch of maybe number twos, number two threes, and a bunch of guys that can just make plays, right? Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how they attack this wide receiver room. I, I, I think – you know, there's talks of moving up, there's talks of staying, there's talks of even moving back to get two guys. Where do you sit first on the wide receiver train? Are you a trade up fan? Are you a trade back? Stay where you are type of guy. Um, I'll say this first. I would be absolutely shocked if the Bills pick at 28. Um, I, I think they might move up. I think they might move back. Kind of depends how the, the board falls. I don't think they're going to do anything crazy and move up into the top 10. Um, I, th- I think if they do move up, it would be in kind of like the late teens, early 20s, something like that. Kind of what Bean's done in the past. Like like last year, you know, Kincaid was there. His guy was there. He went up, you know, two spots and got him. Like th- that kind of thing. And I was thinking about it. Like, has Bean ever picked at our actual first round pick? Well, last year was... We traded up. Kincaid two years ago Alam, was a trade We up. traded back. No, you only traded up. Over. You only traded thought, up as well. Yeah, you only traded up. I think Ed Oliver is the only one. Ed Oliver was at nine, right? Yeah, I think that yeah, was the only one. Yeah, so we didn't have one. And then, yeah. Yeah, so, so I, I guess, think, yeah. I think nine. Yeah. Um, oh, anyway, yeah. Did just, Groot, did uh, Greg Rousseau, did we trade up for? I'm tra- I think we traded uh, back we might for not Rousseau. Have. Yeah. I think we Maybe. I don't know. That would be something. I, I'll look it up while you're while you're talking here. Yeah, anyway, it's just like I, I'd be very surprised if we picked the twenty eight. Um I don't think we're gonna get gonna move up and get one of those big three receivers, the Odunze, the Marvin Harrison Jr. or Malik Neighbors. But if Brian Thomas or a guy like that falls to seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, like maybe they, they hop up it and do that there. I'd be really surprised if they wanna give up too many draft picks because Going into this draft, there was a lot of depth on the roster. That we were saying they needed to fill out. We lost a ton of veterans. Like needed to use this draft to kind of like restock the cupboards depth wise. And then next year's draft, when we have all that cap room, probably also important to do that. So I'd be surprised if they trade up and have to give up, you know, multiple firsts or more than too many picks. So uh, I could see them moving up, you know, within ten spots, something like that, or even moving back. I, I think it's all going to depend how it falls on the night of the draft. Like I would love for them to go get a Brian Thomas Jr. if he falls a little bit or if they can, you know, trade back, stockpile some more picks, get a Leggett or a Troy Franklin or somebody like that early in the second. 
uh, I'd be okay with that too. But uh, I'd be very surprised if they picked at 28. Um, yeah. Anyway. And by the way, so Groot was not a trade up or back. It was our original pick. Okay. So there was another one. Um, I am, when it comes to a fan of, I'm actually a fan of the trade back scenarios. Yeah. I really like that. I like, you know, getting more picks in that top 100. Um, I think even though Brandon Bean is very, very good at drafting late, um, I, I would rather have him go up and, and maybe get a safety receiver in, in round two type of combo. Um I'm not a huge fan as time's going on of the double dip at receiver. I would, wouldn't mind it at all. I definitely would be a fan of it. Uh, or I definitely would be okay with it, um, but I de- wouldn't say I'm a fan of it. Um, so when it comes to, to doing trading up, trading down, I would rather trade back than trade up. I would, I've been very adamant about not trading into the top 10. I do not want to give up that much. It doesn't make sense to me. One receiver is not going to change it, especially in a draft this loaded. Now, if it wasn't a draft this loaded, maybe my thoughts would be different on trading up. But it's a very, very, very good receiver draft. I don't think you need to necessarily move up at all. Um, now, for I, we did get the question here from, from Roy. Um, would you be okay if Bean trades up for uh, Brian Thomas Jr. somewhere at 15 or so? Yes, I would be fine with it. At least me personally, I'd be fine with it. Would I necessarily love it if you can rather? I'd rather get a guy at 28 or later. That's just me. Um, so I, I think it's going to depend on on how the draft falls. Like you said, it's going to be interesting to see how the, how the Bills attack it. Brandon Bean, we know how he is. When he has a guy that he likes, he like you said, he wants to go get him. He wants to move up. Um, but this is also a draft where we only have what two day day two one and do two picks, right? Only one second rounder and one first. Um, or yeah, we, yeah, we thought, yeah, we'd well, have I think three. one second, one third. We thought we'd have, or no, yeah, we, we don't have a third. We thought we would, we thought we'd have the we comp, thought we would, a and third. The comp um, became a fourth, yeah, yeah. So you only have what two top 100 picks. I think you'll want to get more. We'll see if he does. Um, now. It, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a tough one for, for me when it comes to receivers. I like a lot of these guys. I like Adonis Mitchell. I know a lot of people are starting to fall on him. I, I yeah. still like him. He's got good hands. Now he, he not necessarily the greatest cont- contested guy, but I like him. A lot of people really hate the idea of Lad McConkey. I'm a fan of it. I think you know even though he yes can isn't super much super really he's not exactly an X receiver, but he can play X. He can play everywhere a little bit. Um, and- yeah, and if, if they do bring a guy like him in, him, like we were talking about earlier, him, Shakir, Samuel, very similar, similar skill sets, can line them up all over the field. So could be one way to go if they want to send that offense completely in that direction. But I also understand if they don't want to have that many guys who do the same thing. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and the only thing with Ladd for me is, you know, he won't be necessarily that big contested catch guy. He's a quick yards after catch, get the ball to him, uh, that type of thing. So I, I, I'm, I'm a fan of Ladd. But even late, right, like not necessarily late, Xavier Legat might be a guy that, that ends up still moving up. We've seen him slowly creeping up draft boards. I, he'd be a fan of – I'd be a fan of him in the early second round. Um, Keon Coleman I'm back and forth on. I, I, I'm i not – wouldn't be a super big fan of him. Uh, Devontae Walker is another guy that I really, really like. And then one of my draft crushes this year happens to be uh, Javon Baker from UCF. I am a huge fan of Javon Baker. Um, you know, another guy that that just to me gets open and can make those contested catches. Um, the only thing is he, he can have some some concentration drops at times. Uh, needs to kind of clean that up a little bit. But those are kind of my list of guys that I'm really looking at. Um, I mean, like you said, a Troy Franklin Jr. I wouldn't mind. Not necessarily as high on him as everybody else is. But there's just so many, so many guys in this draft that you can go with that I wouldn't really even be mad with. I wouldn't. I'd be like, okay, that's that's pretty solid, depending depending where you draft him, of course. Um, so yeah, when it comes to drafting a receiver, I'm a fan of either trading back or or just staying at 28. I, I don't see the really. I, I don't think the ups the the upside really really just kind of gets rid of that downside of not having picks then for the next year or whatever it is. So I, I would be, I would be a big fan of um, just moving back in the draft when it comes to free agent receivers. There's still a lot there that I think actually too, I would like, right. I, I wouldn't mind an OBJ. I know a lot of people are like, Oh no, 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 no. I still think that he showed again that he can get open. He's still one of the best slant 
flat route runners in the league in, in in that category. He still is a great route runner in general. Um, another guy like Michael Thomas as well. I wouldn't mind taking a flyer on him, although I don't think he'll want the money to to, to maybe come here. Uh, Michael Gallup, I wouldn't mind taking a flyer on. He's had some solid years, but I wouldn't necessarily love it. Sterling Shepard is a guy that struggled to stay healthy, has had his ups and downs in New York, but again, a guy that I would maybe like taking a flyer on. And then the last guy is Jalen Guyton. I wouldn't mind taking a flyer on as like a, a stash receiver, a depth receiver. So those are kind of the guys free agency wise that, that I like. Um, what about you though, receiving, and then you can finish up uh, or free agency, and then you can finish up anything that you had on the draft as well. Yeah, the only two other two draft receivers I'll, I'll mention, they could be, you know, second, third round guys, but Roman Wilson from Michigan and Jalen Polk from Washington. I like both of those guys a lot. I think Polk kind of has gotten a little bit less hype because he's Roma Dunze's teammate, but if you watch his film, like he's just as much of a downfield threat. Like their offense was a ton of fun to watch last season um, and should be available in the second round. And then Roman Wilson, second or third round guy, kind of fits that slot type role, can play a little bit outside and like pretty good making contested catches. So a couple other names there. And then, yeah, as far as free and receivers, I wouldn't hate OBJ either, as long as it wasn't like too much of a media circus, which it really wasn't in Baltimore this past mm-hmm. season. Like he didn't say anything. His dad wasn't making Twitter clips. Like he kind of just did his job and their offense and the guy they had throwing the ball is another story of maybe why his numbers weren't so good, but he, he did his job and he didn't say much about it. And, you know, ideally he's only going to get healthier. He'll get older too, but he'll get healthier. Uh, another name, Miko Hardman uh, could probably get him for pretty cheap, can return a little bit, um, knows how to play in big games, makes big catches. The game when he catches the Super Bowl. Uh, didn't work out with the Jets last season, but went back to the Chiefs where he was comfortable. And if the Bills could get him in a role where he's comfortable, he's kind of that speedster they might not have. So that's a name I've been following a little bit. Um, and then other than that, just kind of the yeah, the names that you mentioned. I uh, Sterling Shepard, I wouldn't I wouldn't mind. I liked him in the beginning with the Giants. I liked him at Oklahoma. Just yeah, like he said, could couldn't stay healthy, but maybe in a lesser role here, um, maybe he'd you know stay a little healthier. Yeah, I think I don't. I think a lot of these receivers that we did name, especially free agency, a lot of them would be kind of rotational guys. They wouldn't be that yeah. like, number one at all. Um, maybe OBJ might be one of the more guys where he's more solidified in that that number two, three role, right, right around where Shakir is. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think you could still get a solid guy. I think they still will bring in a guy just to see. Uh, maybe it is a guy like Jalen Guyton because he, maybe Jalen Guyton might not want as much or get as much as a Sterling Shepard or OBJ. Um, but there's still plenty of options out there for, for solid receivers. Um, and I, I'm seeing everybody in the comments just start, you know, there's been a lot of names thrown out there, even, you know, in the draft wise, Brendan Rice, who knows about him. I mean, obviously we know, we know about his family as well. Uh, very, very good football family there. Um, I've seen Corey Davis for the free agency wise. Corey Davis would be one that I wouldn't mind taking a flyer on, not necessarily a huge fan of, Um but yeah, there's a bunch of good names here. DJ Chark, I will say, is the one that I do not want. Um, I've seen a lot of people throw his name out there. Not a fan of DJ Chark. I think his career has been a little bit interesting as the as when you look at it, right? It had a pretty good start to it, really fell off there towards the end. So I'm just not the biggest fan of DJ Chark. Um, but yeah, there's a bunch of names out there. I do want to, though, bring up this comment from Joey. Um, really hatch here that has, and I don't see a Brandon Ayuk trade. They want too damn much. What do you think of Brandon Ayuk? Even a T Higgins, I see in the comments a little bit being thrown around there. What do you think about, you know, maybe trading for a, a, one of those franchise tag guys or a guy that like Brandon Ayuk that is looking to kind of move on? Yeah, it depends on what they want, and also guys like this, like we have to get real creative with how we sign them because we we don't have the cats. Like, hey, well. You're gonna play this year for free, but next year, like we'll be able to, you'll you'll make some money. So they have to get real creative with the the signing bonus and the structure of it, and having this year be essentially nothing, and then like all of the money kick in down the road, which isn't really the way you want to structure your contracts in the NFL. You want to kind of have them the other way around before they get older. So if the price was right, it'd be hard to turn down a known commodity like that. But just I don't really see it being in the cards for us this season. Next off season. Very possible, but this off season, I don't really see it. Yeah, I'm I'm similar as well. I just Higgins. I see Ayuk better chance than Higgins. I think. Yeah. Higgins doesn't make too too much sense. Also, I don't think the Bengals would want to move him 
to the Buffalo Bills, I think that would be he a traded little... Diggs to the Texans, so who knows? That's true. That's true. Well, to be fair, though, the Texans haven't met with the Bills in the playoffs in, what, four years at this point? Five years? No, five years. Yeah, t- 2019. I-, I was there. It was a sad one. <laughs> well, yeah, so it's been a little bit there um, for at least that team where the Bengals and Bills are a little bit more close in, in what they, they've been the past yeah. few years. Um, Ayuk, I wouldn't mind, necessarily. I know a lot of people are very against that. I wouldn't mind it, uh, depending on what he's asking money-wise, on top of what we'd have to give up. I know a lot of people are talking about that as well um, when it comes to just uh, going to get Ayuk, right? He's been, what is they, what are they asking for him? So it, it, it's it, it's going to be interesting to see where what, what happens with both Higgins and Ayuk. I don't think either of them are really plausible for the Bills. Um, and I did have another question here as well. Um, if you guys do have any questions, by the way, you can put them in here. We're going to be, we're not, we, we were going to do a three round mock tonight. I'm not going to have enough time for tonight. Maybe next time when we're talking about defense and then towards the end of the next week's show, uh, we'll get into a little three round mock. Um, but if you have any questions, put them down there right now, just cause we're going to be wrapping up in about 10 ish minutes, but I do have another question from Roy and I do like this one. This one's a very good one from Roy here. If chop and, uh, I'm always going to mispronounce this name again. Latu, um, probably mispronounced it. But is there if they're there at 28, should they be the pick over any red receiver? What receivers necessarily would you take over them at 28? I don't hate that. Like I, I wouldn't mind. I'm kind of talking myself more into like taking an edge in the first round, especially if it's one of those guys who I, I, I think are definitely a higher value than 28. Latu falling a little bit because of his medicals, but he's looked pretty good since and. Chop Robinson is just a freak, so I, I'd be okay with him. So if they have a chance to get uh, – it, it's really tough. Depends on what they want to do because, like I said, I'd be, be very surprised if they pick at 28. Um, if they don't have the opportunity to move up and get Brian uh, – a BTJ, Brian Thomas Jr., he's kind of my, my number one at the moment. If they don't have an opportunity to move up and get him somewhere reasonable – or if they don't think they'll be able to get a good deal to trade back, or if they do trade back, maybe they might not get the guy they want, and then it really doesn't matter. Um, I'd be okay with it. But, yeah, I, I wouldn't mind that at all, especially when, you know, Vaughn getting older, kind of maybe only a year or two left. We'll see what they do with his deal. We'll see what, like, the new, the new workings of his deal work after his pay cut. They have a decision to make after next season on Groot, and if they want to extend him, we'll have his fifth-year option, but that gets expensive. Um, AJ Epinesa back for another couple years. So they'll have some decisions to make on the D-line, so they could kind of draft one of these guys and make those decisions a lot easier. So I'd be okay with it. If, if, it's, if it's one of those guys and they still think there's a receiver they can get in the second round, they probably have to move up to do that. But um, I, I wouldn't mind that if, if it's one of these top ends like this. Here, we'll, uh, actually, we'll play a little game here um, to, to wrap it up here. I'm going to give you receivers, names of receivers, and you tell me yes or no, would you take Chop or Latu over them? At would 28? You, yes, at 28. So it's pick okay. 28. Your Brandon, Brandon Bean calls you says, hey, man, oh this Nate, these names are on the board. Part. I'm going to be at a bachelor party uh, that weekend, so he might not want to call me. But <laughs> well, he, well, let's just pretend he calls you up. Yeah. You're at your bachelor party. You're like, well, you know, it might not be the best best time right now, but we'll go with it. Um, you said Brian Thomas Jr. I'm going to just assume that's 100 percent a yes, right? Uh, that one, you yeah. Kind of Adana Mitchell is the next one, and I know I'm mispronouncing his first name as well. So we'll go with Mitchell there from t- out of Texas. Yeah, he's been getting a lot of hype recently. He's kind of become like. The, the the guy that most of the national media thinks we're going to take there, I would probably go Mitchell. Um, I, I would lean Mitchell, but it would make me think. I'm the same way as well. I'm a little bit over on Mitchell there. Now, what about Lad McConkey? I would probably go one of the edges over McConkey. Now, for me, if again, if it wasn't, if we didn't have Khalil Shakir, if we didn't have another slot guy outside of Kincaid or outside of Shakir, I'd probably say Lad. Um, and I know I was talking about earlier how Lad's not purely necessarily a schlock guy, but with his skill set, I don't think over those two guys I would. I think it would be a slight one, but that one would make me think. Um, what about let's go with Troy Franklin? I liked Troy Franklin a lot at the end of the college season. His workouts I, I didn't love as much, and I've like watched a little bit more film on him. Watching the the Oregon games, I was like, this guy's great. He is a little undersized. Like he's tall, but he's a little light. We need to put on some weight. 
he was the guy I wanted at 28 so when all everything first started before we actually started locking in a bit. I, I've lessened my view on him since. Um, I would I, I would take one of the edges over him and then think that he'll probably be available at, in the mid 40s if we want to move up and then get him then. Yeah, he's another guy that I would all I would agree there, and he's actually a guy that slid for me. I haven't really loved him. I necessarily wouldn't love him in the forties. Now, would I hate it? No, but I, he's he's a guy for somebody that just over time has fallen for me. Yeah, um, I would take you know maybe even a guy like a Roman Wilson over him. I would take a Javon Baker over him. Um, now, those are two names that I'll just throw out to you as well. Roman Wilson, Javon Baker are those two guys that over chop. Oh, were you no? Okay, I was gonna no. say because I I feel like. After really after McConkey, it's kind of not too much of a big thing. The only other two that I will ask you about is Jalen Polk or Jalen Polk. Um, he's a guy that you mentioned you really liked. Would what about him at 28 necessarily? Is that a reach? I would do it. At, I think it would be a reach. Yeah, I think he'd be available later in the second. He might even be available at 60 or whatever our second pick is. So, um, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't reach for him there if because. If if Chopper Latu come in, they're immediately becoming like, if not starters, like very high in the rotation on that D line, and I I think that would be kind of too good to pass up at twenty eight. Yeah, yeah, I I think that I agree with you there with Polk. Now the other one that uh, the last one I'll ask is kind of one that would make me think. It, it's one that I think I would take the receiver here, um, and that's a, a Xavier Legat. He is a guy that we've seen i've seen all over the place i've seen a lot of guys yeah he's been weird third round i've seen second i've seen first I, i've seen him all over i'm pretty high on legat i really like him um i know he's got his own questions as well as all these other receivers do i personally would probably lean legat um what would you do there with with xavier that's a tough one yeah like he's been weird it's like the beginning it felt like he was like started off high then he dropped then he came back up now he's dropping again like he hasn't like stayed consistent the thing that worries me with him is he really only had one year of productivity at south carolina and he had a pretty decent guy throwing the ball desmond ritter like who's actually i think a lot of draft people like him more than they thought um that would be a tough one uh I would probably lean Leggett there just because he has maybe the highest ceiling of any of the receivers that aren't in that top three. Um, and he would be kind of that big, fast outside guy that we kind of have never had. So I'd be really interested to see what him and Josh can do. But again, like he's his workout numbers are off the charts, but on the field, it was only really there for one year, which is which is was kind of weird to me. Yeah, that's a big question with Legat is the fact that, you know, it is that one year of major productivity. I mean, you've seen it with receivers before that that come out and only have really one. You've seen others that are the opposite. I mean, last year you saw um, Jordan Addison fall because his pat this pat his last year in college wasn't as good as his, his his two previous years right you see that opposite as well so productivity is always one that people say do they need productivity in college do they not need it it's always been back and forth i always think you know yes it plays a factor you definitely have to look into it um but we'll see how much necessarily over time as they probably start to calculate this type of stuff more how much yeah. it really does play an impact um but like that yeah like that's a tough one i think i would take them though um over the, either of these two, I do have a couple more questions here. Got a, got a couple good ones here actually, um, but we can we can do them quick. The next one up is how many seasons in the future are allowed are teams allowed to trade picks from? I believe it's three years, if I'm not mistaken. I think um, that sounds right. It's yeah, not like the NBA. Have... We're in the NBA. They're trading picks now that dudes are in fifth grade. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, which that yeah, that's that's crazy. But I think it's three years is that the most, um, just because they don't want guys that are yeah again trading picks for guys that are right now in seventh grade, sixth grade, like they just don't want that in the NFL. Um, so yeah, that I believe it's three years. Uh, next up is again from Bills fan seven eight eight three. He says, um, if you if you know that you can get Odun uh, Dunze and and keep either sixty or both your seconds next season, would you do it? What option would you take? So, he he also said, and a first, of course. So you you trade both firsts next year, this year. So that'd be two firsts. You'd either keep your six pick sixty this year and get rid of both seconds, or get rid of pick sixty this year, keep both your seconds next year, and probably give up like a 
four and a three or something like that along the yeah. lines. Um, would you do that? I would probably do that. I don't know if that scenario is possible. I feel like they would want at least, uh, you know, a first, obviously our first issue, our first next year, and then two seconds. Because to get a Doomsday for sure, you probably have to, you know, probably have to move up into the top 10. And you have to look at like whatever that chart, whatever the chart says yeah. that was made 40 years ago that for some reason we still use. But yeah, I, I would do that. I would be surprised if it was possible. But yeah, I wouldn't hate that. Yeah, I'm on the same boat as well. I think I'd rather keep at least one second round pick next year. Um, now, I, I, I'm not a fan of trading up in general, but if you can get rid of one second and somehow keep the two others, oh, I'm all for that. Um, now, it, it's, yeah, I, I just, again, I don't know if, how much how plausible that is. Um, now, but if, hey, if you get a call and they say that and they're, they're willing to accept it, I'm down for that right away. Um and yeah, it, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be a great big question because I also see this coming in from Joey here. Um, there are teams willing to trade out of the top ten, but they want three first round picks. Uh, that's too much. It's too much for him. I agree as well. I mean, anything over anything over two first rounders to me is very um, hesitant. And actually, Joey just brings up this comment as well. But if you can get it, it, unless it's for if it's from Marvin Harrison Jr., by all means, send the house. I don't like. Go There's people it. who like neighbors and Junze more than Marvin Harrison Jr. I lo- look, I like all three of them. It's just for me, Marvin Harrison Jr. is just that on that next level already than those other two. I think they, they he's the more most well rounded, he's the most NFL ready out of all three of them. Um, but Marvin Harrison Jr. would be the one where if you can get give up two firsts, I wouldn't give up three. I'm not giving up three first rounders in any scenario. I'm sorry, I'm just not doing it. That's too much. If you can give up your first, your two firsts, two seconds. Hell, even a third I, on top of that, I would do that for Marvin Harrison Jr. That's one, though, that I, I really don't – I don't think it's going to happen. Um, but, yeah, anything over two two first and a second and then, like, a two-thirds or whatever, I would not do. If you have to give up two seconds and two firsts, I'd be very hesitant to. Um, now, would I be mad if they did that? No, but I just personally wouldn't do it. Um, okay, let's see. I'm just trying to read this through here. Do you have any last comments on this topic beforehand? I don't think we have any other questions in here that I missed. Yeah, no, not really. I agree with what you said. Like, you don't want to give up too much because we mentioned earlier, they caught a lot in this past offseason. We lost a lot of a lot of guys who played a lot of minutes. So need as many picks as we can get to kind of retool that cupboard. Uh, this year and next year. So I definitely think they're going to make some moves, but I would be surprised if they did anything like that crazy that, you know, cost us multiple picks going forward. Yeah. And I, you know, if we really want to do something, we can just do exactly what Rory says right here and just sign Jerry Rice, right? That sounds like a great yep. plan to me. It he was... doesn't look bad suited up in whatever that commercial is. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. oh, he looks the best out of all of the other ones. I'll say yeah. that. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it it's going to be interesting to see. We'll see how it happens here, how the draft goes. We'll definitely dive into it more and more. Um, it's going to be awesome, though. I'm excited for this one. It's been first one in a while where I think Bills fans are truly intrigued on what's going on. Like, yeah. don't have a clue. They could do a million things. I know last year was somewhat similar, but I think still even last year, everybody kind of knew, okay, well, it's going to be probably a weapon in some aspect. Um, I was definitely shocked it was a tight end. But, um, I, you know, I, I, I think that at the end of the day, we'll trust Brandon Bean to do the right thing. He, he's been yeah. a great, great GM for the Buffalo Bills. He's done great things here. Um, so before we hop off, though, do you got any last words for the, the the comment section for Bills Mafia for any for just anybody listening? Yeah, I appreciate you guys turning in. The chat was great. A lot of a lot of good questions, keeping it engaged. That's when it's the most fun because the two of us only have so much to say. So appreciate everybody tuning in on a Friday. Um, and go Bills! Excited for the draft and seeing what we're gonna do. Yeah, next week. Um, I'm not. We're not 100 percent sure if Scott will be here next week, but you know, we're hoping definitely that Scott will be here. We'll we'll have to see. We'll see what goes on there. Um, but we'll have another another uh, another show next week. We'll dive into the defense a little bit. You know, there's questions I see already. People talking about it. We need need some depth at safety still. What's gonna go on there? Defensive end. We talked about a little bit today, right? There's do we need do they need another linebacker in case somebody goes down? We saw what happened last year. So we'll dive into a little bit of defense next week. This was a really awesome show for you guys. This might have been the 
biggest off the edge show I think we've ever had. Um, so that's awesome, especially since it's been a while since we've had an off the edge show. So shout out to everybody in the comment section. You guys were awesome. As Joey said here, 12th man mafia was in the house in this show for sure. So you guys were awesome. We appreciate all you guys in the comments. Um, and yeah, so as I always say though, as Scott also mentioned, go bills as always. Um, and I'm sorry, before I actually say this, Roy, your your band, Roy. No, um, um, but yeah. So we'll we'll see what hats that just caught me off guard there a little bit. But yeah, well, you guys were awesome again, as it was yeah. mentioned. Yeah, Roy, you're always great in the comments. I know that you're always in there. But shout out everybody in the comments. You guys were awesome. Um, we'll see you guys next week. And as always, spread some love this week, guys. It's the end of the week, going into a new week. Let's put everything behind us. End of the work week um, for most people, at least. So. Let's have another great week starting up in, in a few days. And, uh, yeah, go spread some love this week. And, as always, go Bills. Go Bills.